Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, webinar, which is on uh, some technical changes to the way in which uh, the DOI service is now going to be delivered uh, in Australia. Uh, I'm Adrian Burton. We've got a number of uh, other presenters here today to just sort of walk you through exactly what will be changing and what the new situation will be like. I'll get on with it. Um, ARDC and DataSite have been collaborating for a very long time now. The timeline goes back to even well before DataSite itself was actually formed. Uh, in 2009, the one of the predecessor organisations for the ARDC and was involved even before DataSite itself um, was constituted. We helped with actually writing the constitution for DataSite and we were there right at the very first member meeting in uh, France in uh, 2010. Um, it's a very long term relationship that we have with DataSite and that we intend to keep going uh, well into the future. In 2000, so in 2010, we just formed DataSite, but there was nothing there and we had to build up the infrastructure, the global infrastructure for minting DOIs for um, data sets and other sort of non-traditional research outputs. So in 2011, uh, the ARDC started to build uh, parts of the infrastructure um, in collaboration with uh, data sites. So it looked something like this, that uh, the Australian research institutions came through the ARDC systems and we provided a number of sort of front end things to, that made it a little bit easier to create metadata and reserve DOIs and um, manage the, the DOIs once, you know, update them once they've been uh, created. We had uh, validation and um, link checkers to see that the links were, were working nicely. In the background, whenever we mint a DOI, whenever we've always minted a DOI, we've registered that with data site and that, uh, in the right at the beginning, that was the key role of data site was to register that into the international DOI system and to resolve all the requests um, for, uh, for DOIs. So we had a kind of front end that was helping people at that minting and managing stage and then all the really fundamental data, uh, DOI infrastructure has always been run by um, data site. We've all, always also had uh, very strong support, um, just even not just on how to mint a DOI, but why and whether and what kind of business processes and, and whereabouts in workflows. So we've always worked very closely with the research organisations in Australia to, um, uh, you know, pick the right way in which to implement uh, DOIs for data sets in, in a research organization. So if we fast forward um, through to 2020, where we are now, there's some changes that's happened uh, in the data site system itself. Centrally in data site now, there are some very, very mature systems that uh, actually provide all the functionalities and, and more uh, than what we've uh, ever provided here locally for Australian clients. And a, a very strong set of outreach developed for that 10 year period. So what we found now is that if you look at those two, the, the light blue box, which is the ARDC systems, it's fairly much just mimicking now uh, what could be done uh, centrally at data site. So that's what these um, changes, the transition that we're talking about now, is related to this um, uh, over time now, the, the functionalities are just uh, being mirrored. So what we're proposing that 2021 might look like, sorry, in the wrong direction, 2021 would look like this systems area that of ARDCs, no need for us to uh, keep maintaining that now because it's um, all that functionality is available centrally at data site. 
So we, uh, over the next year, uh, plan to uh, remove that sort of software application from ARDC local systems, provide consortium access for all the Australian research organisations to get direct access to the uh, data site systems. And um, pretty much all the functions that you've been used to uh, at the ARDC are available now in the data site systems. Some of them are not exactly the same. Uh, some of them are still being developed in slightly different ways from what you might be used to. But in general, the general gist, it's a tr true statement to say that the, the, the key functionality that, that you've grown used to using uh, through the ARDC systems is now available through the data site systems. And just to be clear, those data site systems are our systems. You know, we are consortium members. You are all members of a consortium that, that is part of data site. Those data site systems are our systems. So um, we're now just um, all using the same central system. So that's what uh, 2021 will look like. And that's in general, the, the, the uh, changes that, that, that we're um, now talking about today. I might hand over now, uh, just before I hand over to, to Cell. So if you look along at this, this big picture in 2010, we had the establishment of data site for the first 10 years. ARDC provided a whole set of um, extra functionality for Australian um, uh, minters. Uh, and we've always provided that as part of the Australian research infrastructure. Now in 2020, uh, ARDC still provides all that backing and support, provides you access to the data site um, uh, infrastructure through the, the, the consortium that, that we fund and resource. And uh, now you'll be getting that uh, functionality from the central data site systems. Into the future, it's important to note that we continue our support for the consortium, for minting DOIs in Australia, and for more. We're at ARDC now with uh, our other resources we'll be focusing in on uh, how to really get the best value out of having, after you've minted a DOI, then how to, you know, what does it actually do for you? How can we really help with the global tracking of uh, the outcomes and the, the impacts of research uh, by using uh, data site DOIs? More on that a little bit later. I'll hand over to Cell now. Uh, I've got the, the, the slides up on the screen, Cell, so Maybe if you just want to talk to them and I'll forward the slides when you're ready. Thank you, Adrian. Um, can everybody hear me? Yes. Um, good. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. I am Sal Pilapil and I am the IRDC ID Services Coordinator. On the screen today, you'll see the proposed timing for the transition to data site Fabrica. So during the month, months of April and May, ARDC and um, data site have worked together in preparation for the transition of all our clients. During the month of May, we have also started creating all the um, data site Fabric account, accounts and started the distribution of those test accounts as well. We have sent announcements and completed some documentation to help aid all our users in the preparation for the transition. So some of you or majority of you would have probably received the data site test Fabric accounts. So for all our manual minting users, we would really recommend that you start testing now. Um, data site will present later the Fabrica interface. However, we would um, expect that by the end of September, everybody would have, all the manual minting users would have already transitioned to data site Fabrica interface. By the end of September, that would mean that we would have to commission the DOI manual interface from that you access from the RDA registry, which is my DOIs. Also for our manual minting users, uh, I'm sorry, machine to machine minting users, once you have received your data, data site test fabric accounts, we would like to ask you to start planning for the migration, any code changes, any configuration changes that you will have to do in your system, please start planning and um, start testing. We would, expect that everybody, all our M2M API users would have completed a migration by end of December, at which time we, we will decommission the ARDC DOI service. If 
at this stage, you anticipate that there will be issues with the migration and you will not be able to complete it by the end of December, we would really encourage you to get in touch with ARDC. Let us know any issues so that we can work together and then we can plan on a transition that works for both you and ARDC. So that's, that's the timing. If um, any feedback or any um, suggestion with regards to the proposed timing, please let us know. Next slide, Adrian. Coming here. Okay, thank you. Um, these are the transition steps at a very high level. This is in line with the transition timing that we that I have just presented. So, first step is the creation of all your new Fabrica accounts. The Fabrica accounts, as you are probably aware, is the same account that you use to manually mint. That means to log into DataSite Fabrica and to um, authenticate to the DataSite API. Once you have received your test Fabrica accounts, we you are going to conduct all your testing. So will you let us know when you have completed the testing, and then when you're done, we will then distribute your Fabrica production accounts. At that time, we will start. You will start the migration, and then when you are done, and finally, you, when you are finally completed the, the the migration to production, you just what, what you have to do is just let us know. Let us know when you are ready, and at that time, we will disable your access to both my DOIs and the ARDC DOI API. That will mark the completion of your migration. So that's that's those are just the four easy steps. We create your account, we distribute it to you, you conduct your testing. Once testing is done, we will distribute your production account, you will migrate to production, and then you where well, you let us know when you have completed the migration. Next slide, Adrian. Yep. Thank you. Nothing has changed when it comes to supporting you from the ARDC point of view. ARDC will remain your single point of contact even after the transition to data site Fabrica. Any issues, feedback, suggestions, queries that you may have in relation to data site Fabrica and the API, you send it directly to services at ardc.edu.au. In turn, if there are issues that we need to escalate, we will work closely with data site and we will work to resolve your issues as soon as possible. It is important to note that, that you contact us in the first instance. So nothing has changed when it comes to the support of ARDC to, the, to all our DOI service. Do we have questions? Yeah, there if is none, one question I, there, Cell. Um, yes, there's a question Joel? from Paula about how do we get a test account? Um, Paula is, Paula, if you can send an email to services at ARDC, all, um, all our existing uh, ARDC users, the UI users have already been contacted when it comes to the creation of the test DUI Fabrica account. If you are a new user, if you are a new um, prospective user, then you send an email to services at ardc.edu.au and we will get in touch with you and we will send you your um, test Fabrica account once we have um, done all the administrative um, tasks. Is there any other question? That's it at the moment. Good. We okay. uh, off to. Um, have you done the cell? Is there anything else on the? Yes. Um, that's that's all, Adrian. Thank you. Yeah. Then uh, through to Joel now. So, Adrian. so yeah, I just encourage people to put any uh, questions they have in the chat box. That's probably the easiest way to, to raise the questions and we'll sort of, as we as they come through, we'll sort of try and answer those in context or at the end of sort of each section. Um, so hi everybody, I'm Joel Ben. I'm the uh, DevOps Manager at ARDC. Um, I've got a couple of slides just to sort of reiterate some of the um, communication some of the information we put out in the documentation earlier uh, this year um, around sort of the scenarios that our users will come up against when they're transitioning over to data site services. 
so the first, uh, so there's three scenarios really, three main scenarios, and the first one um, is for manual minters. So this is uh, AIDC DOI users who currently log into the RDA registry, registry to manually mint DOI, so they might only just use the manual interface, but we also have some users who um, primarily use the API to mint, but they will still log into the, to the interface to, um, you know, deactivate DOIs or um, enrich some of the metadata manually instead of doing it through their, their API connection. Um, so for these users, the, the transition is obviously going to be fairly straightforward um, for, the, for the interface. Um, once you've got your credentials, as we just spoke about, to the Fabrica uh, test instance, you'll be able to log in with those credentials and start sort of having a look around and familiarising yourself with the interface. Um, and I believe Mary's going to run us through uh, the Fabrica interface in a little bit. Um, but really, it's it's like any new application. There will be an adjustment period. Um, Adrian sort of touched on that the, the same functionality is across the two applications, more or less, um, and it's just a, a different interface and a different way of sort of approaching uh, minting. DOIs. Uh, the other the other thing to note is that there are separate instances. So now, when you uh, use the AADC service to do test and production minting, you log into a single instance to do that with your account. Whereas when you're going to Fabrica, there'll be a test Fabrica instance and a production Fabrica instance, um, and that allows you sort of to keep them very obviously separate um, when you're doing your sort of uh, testing within Fabrica. Next slide, please, Adrian. So the next uh, scenario is users of the ARDC DOI API, um, and this is going to be the majority of our users, I believe. Um, so this API has been around since the early days of when we started to mint uh, data site APIs. So the, the bulk of our clients using the APIs, well, our APIs will be using this API. Now, the ARDC API is quite different to the data site APIs, so it's, they've got real di really different signatures. There's um, different uh, request endpoints, there's different messages that have to be posted, and there's also different responses that, and error codes that come back. So there is, I can almost guarantee that there will be code changes required for clients using this API, um, and it's probably sort of where the bulk of the work's going to be for our users. Um, the the API itself, um, uh, data sites APIs, they, they offer several APIs to register DOIs. Uh, the two primary APIs, the REST API and the MDS API. Um, the services that we offer through the ARDC DOI service um, is underpinned by the MDS API, um, and that's probably the older data site API. The REST API is a newer API. It underpins a lot of the functionality in data site Fabrica, and it's probably the preferred API to go with um, but it will depend on your circumstances and, and what you're comfortable um, in using. So the REST API is um, it's a JSON um, specification API, so it operates purely on JSON um, objects, whereas the MDS API um, handles XML. So it will come down to sort of what your developers have a preference for and which ones you can integrate with. Um, in terms of testing the APIs, so once you've got your credentials to test Fabrica, you can start using either of those APIs to sort of start integrating and testing. Um, and in parallel, you can continue to use the ARDC service. So that won't stop anything um, from occurring through your normal uh, systems, but you can set up a, an extra test system and start sort of tinkering around with those APIs to work out which one is going to be best for you. Um, we've also obviously got technical staff, so if you come up with some, uh, come up against a few challenges in doing some sort of uh, integration with the new APIs or how to handle the messages coming back, um, please flick uh, an email through to services at ARDC um, and we can try and assist you. Next slide, please, Adrian. So the last scenario is, is probably the easiest one. So this is a very small subset of our DOI service users, um, and these are clients using the data site client API. Um, so this API from ARDC is basically a replica of the data site MDS API, and it was constructed so that people with third party applications such as Figshare, Dataverse, Pure, could configure their application to talk to the ARDC service to mint data site. Uh, DOIs. So the users of this API really won't have too much to do. Um, there'll be some configuration changes within the application, 
So a new API URL, obviously pointing to data site, a new username, so that's your new account that Cell will provide, um, and you will get a new test prefix. So with the creation of new test accounts, you're getting a new test prefix. So any of your existing um, test DOIs, you won't have access to once you migrate into the new test account. Um, you, just to note that your application may only support um, you know, one of the, the data site APIs, so it's, it's best to sort of check, uh, check the configuration manual for your application, or if you don't have one, just check with your technical support. Um, but I can say if you've been integrated with our uh, data site client API, then you will be able to use the data site MBS API, um, but it would be worth checking if you could also use the REST API. I think that's more or less me done. Um, we might pause for any questions. I've got a few that I can read out, uh, Joel. That'd be great, Adrian. Uh, what happens to our old set of DOIs and their prefix now that our organization prefix is going to change? That's a good question. Um, so the test, as I just said, the, the test DOIs um, within Test Fabrica, they actually get routinely uh, cleaned up, so they get deleted by uh, data site on a regular basis. So they, they'll probably go away anyway, and so you, every now and then you'll probably go to update a test DOI and you'll get an error back saying that it doesn't exist, and that's most likely because it's been removed. Um, so you, with your new test account, you will get a new test prefix, um, and you will lose access to any of those test DOIs. Um, with your production account though, you will maintain the same prefix. So all those DOIs that exist in your current production account will be migrated over to your uh, new um, production account. And that's sort of the process that's been happening. And I think we've almost migrated all clients. I think there's probably still maybe about 10 left to migrate, um, but then everyone will have their, their new accounts ready to go. Mm -hmm. And the prefix remains the same, is that right, Joel, between the two? Uh, for the, the production account. Yep, yep. For the production account, correct. Good. Uh, I've got another uh, question here. What's going to happen to the existing records that has DOIs? Will that be migrated as well to production? Not sure that that uh, might be the same question as the one before. Just so that you know, if you've published, uh, I'll just jump in there. Uh, not quite sure what that the first part of that question is. Uh, but if you have um, allocated a DOI name, meaning you've identified a data set with a, a DOI previously, uh, that remains exactly the same because you know that will have been published, you know, potentially is references in journal publications, and it will be out there in the literature. People will ever refer to it. We're not asking you to change any of that. That's fine. That all stays in place and they will resolve into the future. Uh, there's no, absolutely no change with the previous DOIs that you've minted. Um, what we're doing is when we say we're migrating them, we're migrating them into that new interface so that if you need to update them or review them, etc., you'll be able to view all of that in the Fabrica interface. So anything that you've minted in the uh, ARDC interfaces over the last 10 years, you'll be able to see all of that in, in the, the data site interfaces uh, as soon as you migrate across. And the DIs themselves, just to be 100% sure, nothing changes if you've got a Nature article that refers to your favorite data set we are using a DOI that remains absolutely as it is, nothing changes there. Uh, the DOI remains, remains exactly the same and it will continue to resolve as long as the DOI infrastructure uh, stays in place, which is being set up to stay in place for a very, very long time uh, in accordance to the requirements of scholarly communications, which is, you know, uh, we're talking the very long run. Um, all right, there was another question there. Will the slides also be sent out? Yes, we will send the slides out. Uh, yes, we'll have anyone who's registered for this webinar uh, we'll get a link to the slides. I think this one might be for you, Joel. Will using the MDS API create technical debt in the future? How long will that be available? Yep, that is a really good question. Um, so I might have to pass over to Mary um, or Helena mm -hmm. on this one. Um, we've been advised that there is um, there's no changes going ahead to, to deprecate or remove the, the MDS API, um, but maybe Mary or Helena, you could comment on I think Robin is probably the best person to uh, to answer that. She's responsible for our APIs. 
Yes, hello. Hi, this is Robin Dessler, the, the product manager at DataSite. So we do not yet have a firm date on the retirement of the MDS API, but the ultimate intention is that, yes, at some point it will it will go away. Um, currently, our thinking is that is probably on the order of a um, year or two kind of timeline. Um, we don't yet have a firm date for this. Thanks, Robin. And I, I probably should have pointed out um, the different one of the major differences between the, the REST API and the MDSC API is using the REST API, you can make a single call to Mint um, and register your DOIs, whereas with the MDS API, you actually have to make two calls. Um, so it's, it may be easier in the long run just to use the REST API. Uh, with the MDS API, you actually have to sort of uh, register the metadata and the URL separately um, for the DOI. So that might be something to factor in. And the REST API also supports full JSON, if that matters for anyone. So you don't have to send your uh, your metadata packages as XML if you use the REST API, depending on how your shop works. <laughs> There's a, uh, a follow-up question from Tim, who originally asked, what happens to our old set of DOIs and their prefix now that the organization prefix is going to change? So the answer to that from Joel was the organization prefix only changes in the test uh, account, not in the production one. The follow-up from Tim was including ones that are currently set as disabled. So does that mean that are the, I suppose the question is the, the disabled ones being transitioned across? Yep, there should be no changes to those DOIs. So anything that's deactivated at the moment should remain the same. Will ARDC still be able to help bulk updates once the DOIs have migrated across? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. We can, we can definitely uh, have that discussion. Um, one of the things that is on the roadmap for DataSite is to be able to sort of do the batch minting and, and batch updating. Um, we have the functionality within the registry at the moment, um, but we could possibly help out in, in updating um, DOIs in the future. Any comments from our data site colleagues on uh, the bulk update functionality? Uh, yes, we are aware that this is something that people are very interested in. Um, we also do not yet have a, a firm timeline for this one either, um, but that is something that we know people are interested in, so we're exploring our options. Sure, thank you. I've got a message from Lyle. I could read it out. Lyle, if your audio works, I'm happy for you to um, say it yourself. Uh, so I might just go on to the next question. I'll come back to that if you don't have a microphone or if the webinar thing doesn't allow that. Uh, confirm that the Thomas Reeson, confirm that the MDS API doesn't have a set date, but would be potentially retired in 2022. I think that was a question. We have not yet decided um, when to do that. We've been trying to run them both in parallel to give people a long time to to uh, get used to the new REST API and sort of make any changes. Um, but we, yeah, we do not yet know exactly when we were going to uh, retire that. Seems that Lyle's microphone is muted and I don't have the magical powers to unmute it. So I'll just read out what- I think he Lyle's might be saying. unmuted now, Adrian. Oh, okay. Lyle, go ahead. Hey, I, look, I just thought I'd um, pass on to everyone that we underwent the migration process to the um, data site system and it went pretty smoothly. Um, so now we've got our fixed share repository and it's minting stuff via uh, the Fabrica system API. Um, and, you know, the prefix has, uh, sorry, the suffix hasn't changed at all. Um, and we're also looking at the manual user interface and it looks to do everything we need. So look, everything was fine, that's all. Good, well, thank you, Lyle. That's a nice contribution. All right, um, might be time for us to move on to our next section. I think we're done with the questions that have come up there. If you've got further questions, don't hesitate to put them in whilst you're, whilst you're listening. Um, I think we'll hand over to our data site colleagues. First of all, maybe just to uh, introduce uh, the data site support team and what 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 you guys do and and what kind of roles there are there and then to give us a, a run through the uh, uh, Fabrica interface. Helena. 
Hi, good afternoon. Um, yes, we did want to take the opportunity to also briefly introduce ourselves so that going forward, you know who you're talking to. Uh, so my name is Helena. I'm Data Sites Director of Community Engagement. So I am responsible for membership. Uh, I will probably mainly be working with ARDC directly, but if you have any questions uh, about our member model, about the consortium structure, about what it means to be a consortium organization, uh, then I am the right person to talk to. Uh, maybe before I hand over to Robin to introduce herself, um, you can reach all of us by emailing support at datasite.org. That's our main email address. Uh, and then your question will get assigned to one of us, depending on the topic, uh, and you will get an answer from us. Um, so yeah, Robin. Yes, hello. And like I said, I'm Robin Dessler. I'm the product manager at Datasite. So um, that basically means that I am the, the interface person between Helena's engagement team and our development team. Um, so I kind of help bridge that gap and figure out where we're going with our services based on what you guys want. So feel free to let us know. <laughs> Yeah, and so basically, if you have suggestions about product functionality, about DOI Fabrica, about the API, then Robin is the main person, uh, and she'll be able to uh, add that to our product board so that the things you need uh, are being developed by our dev team. So, Mary? Yeah, hi, um, I'm, I'm Mary Hirsch. I'm the uh, support manager at DataSite. And I work uh, mainly um, with um, a kind of help desk service that we provide to our members. Um, so I work closely with the dev team to resolve issues and um, try to make sure our documentation is up to date. So if you do have any feedback on the documentation or if you have any questions, as Helena said, uh, you can contact us at support at datasite.org. Yeah, and Mary will now talk you through DOI Fabrica and the transition process. If I just chip in whilst Mary's getting ready, we're really excited now to you know actually be able to provide all that you know we're not changing any of the support allocation that we do at ARDC and we're now complementing it with a whole new team in data site and uh, so we're really quite excited about being able to um, really promote the use of digital object identifiers for data sets and promoting you know the actual data sets as first class objects in the scholarly communication cycle and as i said before really working globally in australia and with data side on the the systems that allow us to track um you know the what the impact of research was, where you know the, what the impact of some of these data sets, where they were used, um, what kind of references they were, what kind of usage there is to them. So I think that's we're very excited about the the new sort of step up in the in our collaborative relationship. Yeah, we're also very excited that ARDC will be leading uh, or continue to lead the Australian consortium. Uh, you've already done so much great work in this space. And uh, I think there is a lot more we can still do. And I, Mary will also mention at the end of her presentation that there will be a virtual member meeting, uh, also one hopefully in the, the right time zone. So uh, that will... Uh, give us another opportunity to interact with this group so that we can also really hear from you um, what we can do in the region. Okay, so uh, I think um, I should uh, just go ahead. I'm going to talk you through our web interface, uh, which is called Fabrica. Um, so let me just see. Okay, so what is uh, Fabrica? Um, so, Site Fabrica is a web interface for DOI registration. So, you can register DOIs and you can register metadata. Um, and it also is where uh, you can update and manage your accounts. Um, as Joel mentioned, there's a production environment and a test environment, and they are completely separate. So, um, 
as, as, as already we mentioned, um, it would be great if you go into our test environment and you can create as many DOIs as you want, you can play around with it, you can fill in all the fields of the metadata, um, and none of those DOIs will ever go live in our production account. Uh, system. So, so yeah, we highly recommend that. It's a sandbox, so go and play around, and then when you're ready, you can move into the production system. Um, and I've just put the link to our support site where you can find documentation about Fabrica, and I've added a few more links into the slides as well uh, to our support sites. Um, so, uh, the first thing I think I wanted to talk through was um, the account setup that we have uh, in Fabrica. Um, so, uh, you may or may not be aware that we, we, we transitioned uh, to a three tiered structure for consortium. So, you're all part of the ARDC consortium. And uh, this allows the consortium organizations to manage repositories and prefixes themselves. And then um, the top level consortium, which is ARDC in this case, is the is our primary point of contact. And here is a very nice diagram that was created by Robin, uh, which kind of demonstrates how uh, we've set up the accounts. So at the very top, there is the consortium lead, in this case, ARDC, and then below are the different um, consortium organizations, and those consortium organizations have a um, minimum of one repository and then maybe more um, as needed. Um, so what does that actually look like in practice? Okay, well, here is what happens when you log in with your consortium organization account. This is the first screen that you will see. Um, we, we're, we're using opaque IDs really at the moment, although um, I think you guys have, well, that's it's, it's um, essentially a four um, character or five um, ID that you use to log in and you will see uh, at the top right when you're logged in um, with your consortium organization account you can see the ID at the top right there you can also see it in the organization information you can update your organization information and we would recommend that you do that um, to include the service contact um, and any other information about your organization. Um, and then at the bottom right there, I just pointed to um, the feedback button. So that's quite useful if you want to send us um, any screenshots. That will take a, a screenshot directly of the page that you're looking at. So if you need any technical support, you can use that. It's quite helpful. Um, and then we'll see here this is the repository account so the id that you will use to log into your repository account will be the consortium organization id followed by a uh, dot and then a string of characters um, so it's different this is a different account um, and when you log in you will see again at the top right the id that you've used to log in and information about your repository and you can update the repository settings as well um, so what can you do uh, once you've logged into fabrica well i've just uh, tried to show some of the differences between the permissions um, in terms of functionality when you log in with either your consortium organization account or your repository account um, so basically for consortium organization you can go in and of course you can update the settings and the information about your organization um, but the main uh, purpose of this account is to create uh, repositories and manage your repositories so part um, an important function of that is that you will assign prefixes to those repositories and then you can move the prefix between repositories and you can move the DOIs between the repositories. But this account is just for creating repositories. If you want to create DOIs, you need to log into the repository account. And uh, so on the right there, you see that the uh, permissions that you have when you log into the repository account are essentially to create and manage DOIs and metadata. Um, so I am actually going to do a, attempt a live uh, demo, uh, but I'll just flip through flip through these three slides on how to actually create a DOI in Fabrica. So, as we've seen in the previous slide, you need to log in with your consortium uh, with your repository account, 
uh, credentials. You navigate to the DOIs tab. So you'll see there are four tabs when you log in as a repository and the DOIs tab is one on the right. Uh, this repository already has four DOIs. And just there on the left hand side, you will see oops, uh, the create options that you have. So um, I'm just going to talk you through the form today. Um, if you want to use uh, XML, you can directly, actually there's a few accepted formats that you can use to create a DOI using the file upload, but we'll just focus on the form today. So you just click on the create form button and then you can go ahead and fill in the required metadata fields. And we've just recently added um, the recommended and optional metadata fields. So you can actually fill out all of the available metadata fields for your DOI in the fabric of form, in the fabric of form now. So let me see if I can just quickly show you this uh, live. Um, so here we have, I've just logged into this repository example one. And here we have info about the number of DOIs. The settings, you can update the repository settings here. And there's a few fields um, like the software that you're using or the repository type. Um, and also you can include the certificate here. Um, so yes, please go ahead and, and update that information. Make sure you have a prefix, so you won't be able to create DOIs unless you have a prefix assigned. And then you need to navigate to the DOIs tab and click Create Form. And I'm just going to um, click to this tab where I have one I prepared earlier. <laughs> and uh, I'll just uh, quickly walk through. I think that most of this hopefully is uh, quite intuitive. So you will see the required fields have um, the red star next to them, which means that you have to include this information or you won't be able to register the DOI. So there's um, the DOI here at the top with the prefix. You can select the prefix you want to use if you have more than one. Um, you can edit the suffix. If you don't choose to edit, that's fine. You will just get a randomly generated suffix here, which is what we recommend generally. The state of the DOI refers to whether the DOI is publicly uh, facing, publicly available or not. Uh, we recommend using the draft state. Um, this is useful because if you make a mistake, you can delete a draft DOI, even in production. Once the DOI is registered or findable, you can no longer delete it. It's registered if it's in production, within the global handle server and, and, and it can't be removed. So please use test and please use draft. Um, and then obviously you can move it to register or findable state once, you, once you've got everything as you want it. Um, then the URL, uh, you need to include the landing page uh, where the data set or um, the content will be located. In the creators field, you have a couple of options for filling in the um, the creator. So here um, I included a name identifier, which is an ORCID ID. In this case, you need to include the full URL. Um, this is a person and uh, the given name and family name are auto populated in this case. You can also type the given name and family name into these fields and this field at the bottom will be auto-populated. You can add the affiliation here if you want by typing in the uh, name of the organisation. And then uh, the title, you can just type that in there. You can include a title type if this isn't the main title. Include the publisher, the publication year and the resource type general. This is also a required field and it's a controlled vocabulary list. You can select from this drop down. You can add more information here if you wanted to. So those are the required fields. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the other metadata fields. I have included um, links to the documentation. And in fact, you can find a description of every 
uh, fields in here. So you'll be able to have a look at that in your own time. Uh, I was just going to show the related identifier field. I just took a DOI from here, which is a publication. And now we have the option to include the related identifier. You can see the related identifier type is auto-populated because, um, it's, well, it detects that it's a DOI and we can have the relation type is cited by um, oh, sorry, no, it should be slides. Okay, so I think leave that. Um, so I think, yeah, we can just register this DOI. No, I think things will be fine. Yes, and um, we can see that. Um, we have uh, the information about the, um, the DOI registered here. It will appear into our list of DOIs. And you can also um, go in and change the state to findable or update. So I think um, that gives an idea, um, hopefully, of how this works. And hopefully, it's not too complicated and you can go and have a look and, and play around with it yourselves in our test environment. Um, so there's some useful resources I've included, um, and we'll see the link to our support site. Uh, we would really encourage you to sign up to the PID forum, which is um, a discussion platform for everything, uh, anything related to um, persistent identifiers. It's really great. Uh, it's not just um, data site DOIs, Crossref, ORCID, um, any, many organisations are contributing so um, you can sign up to get an account and if you would like to be added to the data site chat room we have a private group um, you can send an email to support data um, we have a twitter account which you can follow and then i also included the status uh, page where you can sign up for alerts so if there is ever a a problem. Um, one of our services, we update the status page to let users know. Just one more thing I wanted to mention that Helena just also mentioned briefly. Uh, we will be hosting uh, our member meeting in 2020, but because of the uh, current global situation, um, we'll be doing it in a different format. So it will be our first ever virtual meeting. Uh, we'll be taking place in October of this year. And we, we will host three meetings of each two hours long and we'll host them across three time zones. And so we would really like to uh, invite you to join us in your time zone. Um, so that will be on the 21st of October, save the date, uh, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Australian Eastern time. And we'll be posting that on Zoom and we'll be sending out the invite and program soon. Um, Yes, so I think that's all from me. Um, Good. Well, we've got some questions here, which we might zip through just in the last few minutes. Um, right. Should the system email stay as services at ardcedu.au, or do we change that? Yes, I think that, that for any that, that will be the first point of contact. Um, um, yes. Thanks, Annie. Um, Mary, um, Adrian Sell here. Um, right now, the default is set to services at ardc.edu.au. Um, you are actually free to change that. There is also other, that's the system email that normally receives notifications when someone changed the password and things like that. There are also a um, field wherein you can put in the contact, the primary contact person and the email of that person. So you can have um, generic um, group email in your system email and then you can have another um, email address in a contact email so you can have both so yes feel free to change that if you need to can we add more than one related identifier yes you can um, you'll see there's uh, an option to um, add related identifier and then here you see it says add another related identifier so yeah, you can do that. Uh, findable in the test site, 
is not findable though. Is that correct? Basically, what our test environment mirrors production in the sense that you can do everything you can do in production, but you can't make real DOIs. So you can make a findable, what looks like a findable DOI, but it will not be registered in the global handle server. So it's not it's not findable, no, in, in the same sense. And it wouldn't be resolvable then, is that right, if it's not in the global system, is it? Uh, they do resolve if you have the link, um, but they're not essentially like... Uh, I won't be in uh, search, uh, data site search. Correct. We made our own fake resolvers, so they appear to resolve because uh, we had a lot of clients that wanted to make sure resolution would work in some way, and so they appear to resolve, but it's it's not real. Yeah. So I've I've made example landing page which doesn't resolve, <laughs> but yeah, you could you could put a proper URL in this field and it would you would be able to click on this link and it would go to the page. Good. Uh, and is there a graph or something related to see what resources are related? So I think uh, maybe this is the GraphQL API um, that we've been I, yeah, I could I could take that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so if, you, if you want, yeah. So um, yes. So currently we store all the related uh, identifier information in our uh, metadata. Um, uh, but via our either our REST API or the GraphQL API, you can retrieve some of those uh, uh, relations uh, because we work in conjunction with uh, with Crossref and now as part of this big EU funded project, uh, we're trying to connect all these relationships together. Um, so technically speaking, there is not like a nice dashboardy interface somewhere where you guys can see a graph, but that information is available for my APIs and you can you can query for the um, conceptual graph of things that are related to your to your DOI yeah and you can find more information about that in our support pages or you can contact us yeah are repositories registered for DOI minting through data site automatically added to re3 data Do we have anyone from Marie 3 Data? Uh, I, I think Robin can take that. No, no, yeah, sorry, I didn't know if Mary did it. Uh, no, they are not. They are not automatically added to Marie 3 Data, no. Uh, Marie 3 Data has a separate um, curation process. And so in order to be listed with uh, Marie 3 Data, you need to actually uh, reach out to them um, and go through their curation process that is handled through um, a different institution. Good. Well, we're at the end of our uh, current questions, so there's a couple of minutes left if you really have a uh, something to, sh to share there. I'm just checking, have I shared my screen now? Can someone say me yes or no, whether they can see my screen? Oh, no, no not yet. Good. I have to obviously click the button to make it very visible. I'm hoping it should be now, is that right? Yep. Good. Um, I just, you know, whilst we're in, unless there's any other, oh, there's a couple of little questions there. I'll be very quick about this. I just wanted to share with you a couple of the, when I, start, I keep harping on about this, um, we're, we're going to help you mint identifiers, but we're already going to work with you to be able to get the benefit of having identifiers, and that's in the tracking systems and in the reporting systems. So on the screen now, I've just got a, a, an exam, a, a, a screenshot of page 23 of the ARC final report instructions. That's the Australian Research Council. That's the funder in Australia. Um, page 23 and section C2 in the report. So this is after you've done an ARC project, you have to report on you. Well, there is a question and it says, provide details of the data outputs produced by this project. The question is mandatory and there's no yes, no answer. So you have to report some kind of data output. The only way in which you can report that data output is through DOI. So this is again, just a little snapshot of what's happening in the world of uh, uh, why we're allocating the DOIs and, and the connections that we've been, we've been working with the ARC around this in, you know, interface and around their policy and around the infrastructure. So that's why we make it part of the uh, Australian research infrastructure so that you can have policies like this from the uh, ARC. Um, and 
you'll see if you know into the future if those related identifiers if we can relate those to uh, grant IDs then when a, a researcher comes to do the reporting at the end you know there's auto populate and all sorts of other things in here anyway I won't go into the deta details of this and I'm happy we will be talking to the sector about this kind of thing in the future but that's just one of the sort of green shoots that are showing you know how you know by minting identifiers we're really uh, helping the tracking and reporting. Uh, the other one is just something that's come up through data site just in the last uh, couple of months actually they've uh, when you go into search something in the data site system and you find the record for uh, the DOI record um, then this is one that's come from the Australian Antarctic Division you see down the bottom here, they've just started to bring in this uh, where there are some back end systems with Crossref and other suppliers to check whether there's been any references to this uh, um, to this data set uh, through other you know relationships to other DOIs. So again, another really nice screen shoot. It's just the beginning. It's not perfect yet, and this this number is potentially a little bit misleading on this particular record, but it's just to show you that these making the links between identifiers and really be, uh, reaping the benefits of having allocated DOIs is is what this next 10 years of us working with data site and the Australian repositories uh, will be about. Now I got distracted there. Uh, I'll, uh, there's a question from Nick. DOI, DOI require persistence of data so is ARDC able to or planning to provide long-term curation of research data as a necessary part of the National Data Fabric? I wish I hadn't uh, come back to this very last question with only one minute to go. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, we have other, you know, as people will know, the identifiers and this is part of our service arm. We also have a lot of projects and other infrastructure data storage infrastructure as well as project infrastructure to build up uh, the infrastructure of the research organizations and research groups in Australia. So yes we are that's part of the holistic approach here. Um, persistence you know, into the future is you know a very uh, wicked problem and uh, part of our um, the way we're approaching that is through these partnerships, you know, partnering, working with research organisations and research groups to build up their capacity and our, you know, our injection of national infrastructure into that as part of a partnership. I wish I had more time. It's five o'clock. Um, is unless there's anything, unless I hear from anyone else that there's anything else we need to do before we wrap up. Um, I will just thank uh, everyone who's presented. Thanks very much for that information. Thanks to the data site chaps for getting up early or going to bed late. I don't know which one you've done. Um, and uh, we look forward to this uh, transition. Uh, if you take these take homes, uh, if you've got any questions, then services at ardc.edu.au. There's a number of support materials that have also been provided by ARDC and by DataSite. Um, so uh, we will also send the uh, recording. The recording of this will be available to participants uh, as well as the, the slides we'll send around to anyone who registered. I'm not hearing anyone saying that I've forgotten anything. Uh, if that's the case, thank you very much for your time and uh, we look forward to uh, working with you and making this a smooth transition and continuing to reap the benefits of DOIs into the future. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone. Bye.